Well, hello, good people. Part five, the last part, I hope, of putting this Lycomian together. And it's just sort of buttoning up odds and ends. I'm going to start off by setting the valve clearances and then fitting those natty gaskets I made a little while ago. I shoveled it round a bit so it's easier for you to see. So let's find top dead centre on the firing stroke on these two cylinders, obviously one at a time. So exhaust valve opening on this one. Let's do this cylinder first. Closing, inlet opening. So that's TDC. So we need to have one complete revolution of the crankshaft. So inlet valve closing. So that's top dead center on the firing stroke. This is number two. It doesn't matter which cylinder we do first. They're all completely independent. So half inch spanner. Not very tight actually. Neither was that. The nut off a bit. And the book figure for both inlet and exhaust is 15 thou. I don't know about you, I tend to leave things a little wide rather than tight, just so reduce the chance of burning a valve. That inlet valve is open and closing. So, and this comes to top dead center. About there, we can do these two. They're all a bit tight, but I don't know whether the previous owner set them. He didn't prepare the engine for running, so I guess they were just put together just about right. Doesn't matter at all, that's why we check it before we run it. Good. They can have their covers on straight away. Good. 
Just had a bit of a senior moment. I thought I'd turn the camera on, so I've just adjusted these very carefully, not wobbling the camera or anything. Of course, it wasn't turned on. Anyway, not doing it again. Let's put the covers on. With the rocker covers on, that's pretty much the engine buttoned up. However, I want to make a aluminium panel to go here with the oil pressure gauge there and a couple of magneto switches below, which is very easy then to wire them into here. The bandsaw has been out of action for a little while. I'll show you why. This is the urethane tyre on the driven wheel, on the lower wheel. These are really good. They're very grippy for a while. But after some years, they lose their grip. They almost go too hard because when they're new, they're really tacky. They're also an absolute devil to get on. Anyway, whilst I was away, a new tyre arrived. So I've just wrestled it onto the lower wheel. I actually stood the wheel on the top of the Arga most of the day, which only brought it up to sort of room temperature, really. I didn't want the wheel hot, but it was freezing cold this morning when I went out to the bandsaw shed and the tyre wouldn't sit nicely. I didn't even bother trying. I know from experience before it wouldn't sit down nicely on the rim. So with a slightly warm wheel, it was very easy to pull the tyre on with some clamps and a little bit of bad language and on it went. It should last several years. So I bought a chunk of three mil alley to cut that plate out. And I also need two or three big aluminium washers for Fred's engine to go on the firewall when I bolt it on. And that's sort of been holding me up as well. So I'm going to cut them all out together. Obviously then Fred's engine can go back on in the next few days. I want both these engines out of the way as soon as possible really, because this is my propeller making bench. And this is going to go next door when Fred's engine goes next door as well and gets bolted on. Then I can move the bench out into the middle of the shop, bolt the propeller blank down and start bludgeoning out a propeller. A bit of after supper, cardboard aided design. I think this is pretty much how I want it to look. It looks a bit like an old fashioned 1930s household wireless set. I bashed that hole slightly wrong, that's why it's a bit wonky. But look, safety first, even the switches are off. It's freezing outside, literally freezing, the cars are frozen over. So I'm not going to bother messing around putting the blade on the bandsaw at this time of night. I'll get on with that in the morning. Well, that's worked out quite well. I just need to finish tidying the edges up a little bit. The back's a bit scratched up, so I'll attack it with some scotch bright and then peel this protective plastic off the front. It can have the same treatment as Fred's instrument panel. The gauge has got a couple of ears on it. I think it came off a case tractor. It had a label on the back. I obviously bought it in Auto Jumble for a few pounds because the label, I think it was either three pounds or eight pounds. I couldn't quite read the handwriting on it. Anyway, it wasn't very much, but I'll just secure it through with a couple of 2BA screws. That's the back of the panel on a really no effort Sunday morning. I really like this mottled effect and it's so easy to do. It's no wonder lots of vintage cars had it done on various parts. It really is easier than finishing and painting. There are a couple of big scratches on the back, but it doesn't really matter. I'll peel the plastic off now and do the other side.
Well, here's a how do you do. I started looking at the carburetor. I took the screws out the top. Look, somebody's drilled a hole in it right into the float chamber. And the drill has actually gone into the float. It hasn't made a hole in the float. I did whip the float out and the needle. Now, this carburetor needs a bit of work. And that could be filled in, I suppose. It's not a particularly nice looking carburetor. It could be repaired. But I didn't quite know how one would repair that, probably with some epoxy or similar. Anyway, a friend of mine has promised that he has a spare one of these, which is very kind of him, and I'll probably pick it up in due course, but I've got a better idea. When I ran the Praga engine, I fitted this Stromberg NAS2. It's almost identical to this one. It's jetted from Ronk C3. But given that this is to get the lycoming running on the back of the Vauxhall, I think using this carburetor would be a sensible thing to do. The Praga ran very well with it. The Aronka ran very well with it years ago. The reason I didn't use it was I fitted it and tried it and got about 20 RPM more static. It's much heavier than the Amal carburetor. And I was still going to have to mess around making an air box and all the rest of the things. It would have been a lot of effort for very little gain like the Battle of the Somme, all that misery just to move General Haig's drinks cabinet 12 inches nearer Berlin. So I think that can be used on the Lycoming. If the other Stromberg does appear at some point, maybe we'll have a look at Stromberg's as a, an extra bonus episode. How exciting. I've bagged up the good Stromberg again. It can go back in the store where I know where it is and it doesn't get damaged. I think that's it for today. This panel looks good. All wired in, delightfully dodgy way, of course. The next time you'll see this engine, it will be bolted on the back of the Vauxhall. I've got this fabulous engine mount that my friend Sam gave me, and it fits on the back of the car so easily, much easier than fitting the Praga engine. It won't take very long to have it bolted on. That's a summer job. The next thing is the propeller. As always, thanks for watching.